Um, I have seen that uh, proposition from the Queensland Government and I think uh, the first thing is that each state and territory um, have different geographical circumstances, different uh, transmission issues in terms of the virus. I think that uh, it's not appropriate for me or for the New South Wales Government to comment on what Queensland might propose. Um, I can say, as I said earlier, that uh, New South Wales certainly doesn't see the benefit for us in following that path. Um, we have a very effective hotel quarantine system. Uh, more than 114,000 people have been through that system, and every day there are three and a half thousand. Every day there are three and a half thousand health and uh, police and other staff who are actually making sure our hotel quarantine system works. So. For us, there is no benefit in considering such a proposition, um, but for Queensland, of course, they can consider whatever they think is appropriate for their Queensland environment. Well, one, big, one big element of that <coughs> is getting all the workers on track so that they stay there so it doesn't leak out that we mm. have a fleet of coming and going. Is that something that could feasibly be done at all, something that New South Wales would consider either you know, in the city or, or anywhere else? Um, certainly. We have looked at whether or not it was feasible to have staff uh, stay in the hotels, but it really isn't feasible. We have, uh, as I said, more than 3,500 staff on any one day. Uh, it would simply be impractical, but there's a very um, substantive reasons, and that is that our health staff and this, the very senior staff that we have looking after people in hotel quarantine um, have indicated quite clearly in the earlier phases that. Uh, they are happy to be involved, happy to work hard, happy to keep uh, uh, us safe, but they would like to be able to still have some degree of normalcy in their life. So at this stage, uh, you know, we've had more than 114,000 uh, people go through our hotel quarantine system. As I said, we have uh, more, than, uh, more than the entire patient load of Royal North Shore Hospital in our, health, our special health accommodation facilities. Um, being looked after by medical staff, um, it would not be logical for us to, on the basis of uh, less than, I think it's three incidences now over the last year, it would not be logical for us to move that arrangement out of Sydney. And, and nor would it be fair or practical to, to follow that path. But look, if Queensland can do it, yeah, also have to remember that um, each of the states and territories are taking nowhere near the number of people from overseas that we take, uh, a fraction in fact. And uh, that in itself presents an entirely different situation. If we consider, for example, uh, Western Australia, we alone have 3,000 staff, sorry, 3,000 air crew a week coming through New South Wales. They have less than 300. Uh, Victoria for a long while had nobody. Uh, Queensland has uh, far less than what we have. So. We have the biggest system by far, um, roughly 43% of all of the people who come through our hotel system we are looking after for other states and territories. Um, there's no doubt from the public health staff's advice uh, to the government that the current arrangements are the best possible. Having said that, um, the public health team have also stepped up audits um, of the hotels and looking at uh, any, any, any holes, and it's a human system as we've talked about many times over the last year, it's a human system. And it's always possible, always possible to find something that we didn't know existed as a, as a whole in the system. Um, and that's uh, something which our public health staff and the police and others working in our hotel quarantine system work at uh, all the time. But as I said, we also have regular audits to make sure that we are plugging all those possible, possible holes.